In this video, I'd like to get you to better understand the e-collar, how it functions in terms of being in the water, being submerged in the water, how consistent the stimulation levels are. And I'm gonna do that by putting the collar on my own hand and putting it underwater in my own kitchen. And let's see how that goes. One of the things you want to understand about an electric collar is that electricity follows the path of least resistance. I'm not going to get highly technical in this video because I want to address a real practical application of how the e-collar works and most importantly, how it works in water. When the collar is submerged and the contacts of the collar, for example, this collar here, are underwater, it will not produce a consistent stimulation on your dog. When the dog gets into the water, the neck may or may not be submerged. I'm going to show you some pictures here and some videos to show you how a dog in the water, the wake will push out and come back in and the water will then rise up above these two prongs and cover them. Let's start the test out here with a Garmin. This is the Garmin Delta Sport XC, a collar I've used for many, many years. Never used it in the water until today. So we're gonna get it to a stimulation level that will work. I'm gonna put it here on a five. Let's see how a five feels on my hand. Do it this way. Can't really, I feel it a little bit, but not enough. You can see the light is lighting up. I feel it. Okay, now turn it up to a six so I can feel it even more. That I feel. Seven, I feel in the water. Not quite the same sting. If I take it out, I feel it a lot harder. So here's the conventional thought. You go under the water and now you're stimming your dog and your dog is kind of responding. The dog's neck is underwater. I'm gonna put a graphic on, on the screen here so you can see what I'm exactly, actually talking about. So completely, my hand is submerged here. The collar's underwater and I can feel a slight stim. Not, nothing bad. I take it out of the water and now I'm wet and the stim is much, much hotter. It's almost where it surprises you. So what's going to happen to your dog, your dog is going to be under the water and the, the two prongs are going to be submerged. Now the minute the dog comes out of the water and you stim, you have completely inconsistent contact because now your dog is wet, which creates less resistance again. So the stimulation level shoots up. Very important to understand that. The Martin collar will work very, very well here. Nice stim, underwater, zero. Feel it slightly there. It's important to understand the levels of your collar. So I always say to you, take the collar, test it on yourself first. Make sure you know your level. I know on a four, I don't feel this. I know this collar. I know on a five, I start to feel it here. On a six, it's hot on me. This is a completely adjustable collar, very different than the other ones. I can control each number and I can control the levels within, within each number. So one of the things you'll see is when the collar is underwater, when the, when, the, when the contacts are submerged on any collar, there is less stimulation. Even if you have some stimulation, you have less. As you turn your collar up higher and higher and higher, the dog's head is moving in and out of the water. So it's coming up and down. And as that happens, if you're stimming, when the head is up above the water and is wet, you'll have an increased stimulation. If he's in the water, you'll have a decreased stimulation. A lot of people will tell you to just use a simple test light. And that's originally the way I came about doing this test, was put a simple test light onto the collar, right? So now you'll see, if I stim here, you'll see, you'll see the light here. I'm gonna make sure you can see it here against my skin. Now, as soon as I put this in the water, no more light. So you can show you here that the light on the collar is actually coming on. So I'm sending a stim out, but it's not lighting the light. This is one of the reasons why vibration was invented on e-collars, because a vibration will work in and out of the water the exact same way. It's a continuous vibration, whether it's wet or not. Depending on the simulation level that you'll choose, you'll see that it becomes dangerous if the dog pops their head out of the water because then you'll see a burn on the dog. When you're using an e-collar, think of the relationship you're trying to build with your dog. If your dog receives inconsistent stimulation, it becomes an inconsistent communication between you and your dog. Arbitrarily frying your dog 
in the water is no way to build a better relationship or to get your dog to want to come back. If the dog associates pain with your voice or your command to come back, the dog will more likely choose to run away from you.